once a week i am subject to a supervisor who is humiliating autocratic punctilious and out outra outrageously overbearing <laughs> no more adjectives <laughs> i could have myself removed from the position i would rather use the occasion for ego scrubbing aha uh -huh. i would rather use the occasion for ego scrubbing but i cannot control my rage my own rage and i am in deep pain because of my reaction please help thank you honey you have answered yourself hmm? make use of this occasion for your rubbing and scrubbing of the ego hmm? it's your karma <laughs> brought you to that person hmm? to work under him you can easily resign and go away but karma is going to follow you you may escape the devil but you end up in the deep sea so wherever god puts you stay put and work up your karma don't blame him he is god in that shape came to scrub you it's not that supervisor he is the super super supervisor coming in that form and if you accept that very soon you will be a change seeing a change in the supervisor himself that's it even though he may be a rebellious huh, taskmaster by you were changing he would change his attitude that way you are not only cleaning up your ego you are helping him also so for god's sake <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. stay put and don't complain hmm? think of the benefit hmm? thank you i constantly let other people's feeling and negativity affect me and i react very strongly emotionally i have been meditating daily for 22 years how can i keep other people out of my psychic space better more meditate more at least another 22 years <laughs> because nobody can hurt your feelings nobody can cause negative things for you if you are strong fortify yourself build up that immunity in your system mind body don't blame others we human beings as a whole are experts in blaming others for everything hmm? even when you walk without looking at the road and go and hit a stone and your toe bleeds if somebody asks you what's happening oh the stone hit me you will say the stone hit me i was sitting in my room comfortably <laughs> the stone came and hit me the needle pricked me 
were experts in putting the blame on others. Hmm. If you are strong, immune, no negativity will affect you. Make yourself strong. Make yourself strong. Use Patanjali Yoga Sutras huh? stanza. Huh? What is the number? 22? First chapter? Maitri Karna Mudito Pyakchanam Sukataka Punya Punya Vishyanam Bhavanada Chitta Prasadanam. Hmm? 33. Oh. Uh, I said 22. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Keep this th- four kind of attitudes huh? towards the people in your life. Maitri, Karuna, Mudita, Upeksha. What is Maitri? Friendliness. Karuna, compassion. Mutita, huh? Hmm. Upeksha, hmm? Disregard. Yes, these are the four kinds of attitudes. When should you use Maitri? Happy people. Karuna? Compassion to the unhappy people. Mutita? Hmm? Virtuous people. Hmm? Become a friend. Hmm? Upeksha? Wicked people. If you see wicked people, ignore them. You don't go to correct them or change them unless they come and ask you. You save yourself. Stay away from them. You know the story of the monkey and the bird. Yeah. Don't, don't talk philosophy to the monkey. Hmm? It will tear your nest. These are the four key attitudes in life to maintain your peace. By these things, what is the benefit? Chitta prasadhanam. Mind can be kept peacefully at all times. But even one sloka is enough for the whole life. We don't have to read so many things. Hari Om. I have a friend who says she suffers frequently from migraine headaches. Are there any asanas or pranayamas in particular which I could recommend to her to relieve this problem? Thank you. Om Shanti. Uh Aha. Ashwakanam. I don't practice asana pranayama anymore, so I'm asking. I'm not sure who has said that. It seems that just if you could relax your breath, just a little deep breath, it could help. And maybe draw the, the blood more to the feet, either through your thinking or maybe through even through putting your feet in some cold water or something. Draw the, maybe draw the blood away from the head. The feet in the cold water will increase the blood supply to the head. It should be hot water. Hmm? Hot water 
expands the blood circulation there. Hmm? But that's all temporary. Hmm? Even asana, pranayama, you can do asana, pranayama, hmm? but find out the cause, hmm? what created the migraine. Hmm? Accumulation of mucus, that means wrong diet, or overexertion, sleeplessness. These are some of the causes. You have to correct that in your life. And then, asana, pranayama, savasana, nadi shuddhi pranayama, and when the Migraine headache is not that there. Other, other times one can practice bhastrika to clear the head. Bhastrika is kapalabhati plus nadi suddhi. It's bhastrika. Kapalabhati means skull cleaning. It cleanses the head area by the deep breathing. Quick, quick, quick breathing. So these are the, some of the practices, but cause is more important. Remove the cause. Sometimes too much worry, too much anxiety, or even, even in seva, service, too much of, I have to do it, I have to save the world. Oh, without me, there won't be anybody healthy, happy here. Hmm? Hmm? And by that attitude, you fall sick. Hmm? No. Take it easy, take it easy. General relaxed life is very important. Hmm? Diet also is very important with that. Last question. Is it possible for an individual on the spiritual path to have an active sex life without being married? Oh, without being married. What do you mean by marriage then? If you have active sex life, you are married. Huh? Not just uh, only when you go to your church or sign a paper, you are married. Huh? Hmm? When you have a companion for your sex life, you are married to that person. Whether legally or illegally, that's is, that is man-made law. In those days, there's no marriage performance, marriage license. I'm talking about the, the olden days. People lived together. They're married. So make sure hmm? sex life is not against spiritual growth. What is undesirable is overindulging, like overeating, overworking. Everything, anything beyond the limit eh, will drain the body, mind, eh, its energy. Otherwise, only people who are abstaining from sex will experience God and go to heaven. What, what happened to the, all the uh, married people? Even most of the saints are married here. So there's nothing wrong with married life. Limitation in everything. Patanjali, when he talks about brahmacharya, he says the benefit of brahmacharya is virya labaha. Virya labam, that is your stamina. You maintain your strength, 
physical, mental. So, overindulging is prohibited. And married life in the present day, married, one has to marry one, one person and live with that person means is to limit the activity. Otherwise, it goes uncontrolled. That's why the married life comes in. But in essence, for spiritual path, this should not interfere. You can have a nice person as a partner, you can have a few children, have a nice business, turn a home, and feed the sadhus and sannyasis who come there <laughs> because they need married people. If everybody becomes a sannyasi, then <laughs> we'll all be starving. <laughs> so, live in the life in the world as, as a normal person, limit your activities your indulgence in the sec in the senses and at the same time offer everything as a sacrifice as a service to the nature but it's god god doesn't need your service directly but your service should be offered to the God in the form of the creation. Whatever you do to your co-existing people, plants, animals, human beings, you are doing to God. So, living a serviceful life in the family will take you to the spiritual goal. There's nothing wrong with that.